Hello, everybody, and welcome back for another episode of our Chromebook Classroom. I am joined today by my very good friends, Alana and Carmen, and they are going to help us all at a very tiring part of year. Maybe we feel like we're army crawling through our day a little bit. Our students feel like that too, but Alana, Carmen, hello. How are you? Good. Yeah, how are you? Good. good, good. Thanks. And do you want to take a second? Just introduce yourself. Let us know who you are and what you do for any of our viewers who don't know yet. Sure. My name is Carmen Gartner, and I am an inclusive consultant. Uh, my name is Alana Briggs, and I am also an inclusive consultant. Oh, and boy, we are thankful for our inclusive consultants because we know that we have very complex classrooms. And, you know, with all of those different, with those different students and different needs. And what I love about this series is your entire team has been helping us see how there are these tools we can use that are great for every one of our students, but boy, are they needed for really specific students. And I love that we can approach this through that lens of UDL. And, and I was so excited about your topic today because you're really helping us look at the idea of sustaining effort and persistence. How can we get kids to be able to independently stick through a task, complete a task, Project management. I mean, we think about that in adult lives. How much do we have to figure out what we need to do when? But, you know, tell me a little bit about this, because I think this is one of those topics that I would never have necessarily thought, oh, technology can help with that. Yeah, sure. Go yeah. Ahead. So thanks, Carmen. Um, you know, I as a grade four teacher, I would work a lot with my students and we would do projects. And as all teachers, we always notice that there's two or three students that consistently struggle with task initiation or task completion. So oftentimes as teachers, what we do is we chunk assignments and that's what we're good at is we chunk and differentiate for our students. And sometimes in my grade four classroom, um, we'll just move ahead here, it would look like this. I would split up the blocks and have time intervals. And within those intervals, um, there's tasks that need to be completed. And at the bottom, you'll see some extension or added complexity for some of those students that might go above and beyond <laughs> what's asked. And what I loved about this was during the middle of the block, I could just simply say, okay, it's 930. Where are we at? Who is completed the task of um, putting in the story setting and adding good description and, you know, hands would go up and, and some of them wouldn't. And that would give me an indication of somebody who I might need to come go and see and support going a little bit further. So I would break this down and this was all in a low tech setting on the whiteboard. Right. But again, I didn't have my finger on exactly who was where. And also students didn't really have that reflection piece as concretely as I'd like to. Like having your hand up to say I didn't finish. Um, often they would forget and then they keep on going. So I was like, wow, we need something a little bit more concrete that we can see and it would be documented so that we can consistently see whether or not the student is struggling and maybe modify the task right. uh, if we know that they're not progressing. So, um, or, or even, sorry to jump in, but even use it as a cue for us oh my gosh, so many are still stuck on setting. Right. Maybe I didn't go into mood deep enough or maybe I need to Absolutely. revisit this, right? So it's also a I great marker for teachers to see uh, where our students are at. Well, and I love that idea of chunking because, you know, you've got that broken down. You're right. It would have been on a whiteboard, but even still on a whiteboard, that means it's chunked the same way for all of us. But we wouldn't have necessarily... As individuals, we know that our pace is, is, is very different. So before we jump into the tech tool, can I ask, let's, can, we, can we show our viewers, where does this fit within the, the, the framework of UDL? Because I do think it's one of those things for us to, to recognize is that this really is part of the UDL framework and a really important part when it comes to our, our students and their, their independence and their, their learning. Yeah, absolutely. So this falls within the engagement area and this is sustaining effort and persistence. So really giving students that uh, building on their self-management skills um, so that, you know, this is a life skill and they can apply this uh, technique to any content area, which is lovely. So we can see this all the way from, you know, early elementary all the way up to high school and it gives students that self-management piece like, you know, this is why I might be struggling is because I can't get past this one part of the assignment or, you know, just understanding how to pace himself, time management skills, that's yeah. huge. So 
Yeah. That's fantastic. Now, here's what's so great. The geek girl, the tech girl. I love this because this strategy, like you said, we can do low tech, we can do analog materials, posters, whiteboards. I remember even creating some checklists that I would laminate and stick on a student's desk, yeah. you know, but yeah. now we actually can use that, that personalized student Chromebook, our teacher Chromebooks, but we can use those personalized devices. And we've got that tech tool that is actually probably in front of all of us almost every single day. You've got a way for us to do this inside of Google Slides, right? And it's super easy. I love that. That's what we need. We need easy. <laughs> And it's interactive too. Students can, uh, you know, when we have tools, and we'll show it to you um, shortly, but being able to interact with a piece and be self reflective is also really good um, self management skills and building a self awareness of what I'm good at, where I need help with. Um, so these are all great for um, social emotional learning and growth within that realm as well. I love this. All right, so we're going to jump in. Let's see what you got. Take it away, Carmen. Well, oh, oh. there we go. <laughs> okay, so basically we, we took what was on the whiteboard in the previous slide and just made a simple chart on a Google slide. And here we can kind of break down the tasks um, and uh, the students can kind of figure out where they are. What I like about this is that students can search up their own little emojis or their own little symbols showing like, hey, I'm done that or I'm not too sure about this. And it doesn't have to be uh, like, I need help, right? Ah. Quieter kids or maybe those that that don't feel comfortable or, or whatever, they are able to communicate with the teacher right there, right in front of their, um, on their desk. And the teacher's able to view like, okay, Jordan needs a little help. I'm going to go over and chat with Jordan about, about what I can, uh, what I can clarify. So That's I really awesome. like, um, I guess the personal, uh, touch on this. Well, and if yeah. we hit escape on this slide deck that you have open, this Google Slides, one of the neat things that you'll see, just like you've created here, and, and for anybody that's like, I want this, <laughs> we absolutely are going to uh, include a copy of this presentation below this video. What's so neat about it is, like you said, yes, you can drag those pictures around, we can do that, but we can also direct comments to a teacher. And so one of the things that you can do is if you select anything and you want to put in that comment, if you start typing at and you want to do an app mention, you can direct it to your teacher. So if you started sending it, yeah, exactly, to you know Carmen, um, you would be able to either see her name or type her name. And now what happens is the teacher gets an email that there's been a comment made and the, the, the student can ask for clarification. But I got to say, getting this to students couldn't be easier. The two of you have a great recommendation just of how simple this is for our teachers to, to manage this with students. Yeah, and I love how flexible it is. You can add to it. Kids can put in um, their learning target for the day. You can add in exit tickets, um, but it just keeps everyone organized. And instead of collecting everybody's work at the end of the day, yeah. you have it right there, right on the slides. I mean, yeah. it does show accountability to the students, but um, collecting assignments and thumbing through to see who's done and who's not done is sometimes um, laborious and, and then you have to return it. It just saves time and it gives students yeah. that extra skill in self-management and, and self-awareness. And one, for sure. And one thing, if you can click down in my grade eight social project, yes. this was a lifesaver for me because, oh, wow. um, you know, as pre-COVID, many students would maybe go on holidays or go back to a home country for an extended period of time. Well, now I'm not putting together a packet for them, which right. I never did, but you know, they always ask for some homework, yeah. uh, at least the parents do. But now we have this on the Google side and they can say, okay, when I come back from my vacation, I'm actually presenting my, my Japan project. So I better make sure that I know what's happening uh, each week and I'm staying on task. Oh, fantastic. So just a quick, a quick rundown of a grade eight project. Um, you know, just uh, kind of showing what needs to be completed when or when we're working on things. So if you are absent, well, you know, okay, I better message my group and just say, hey, did you guys finish X, Y, Z? And then um, when you're back on Monday, you can just pick up where where you left off. So 
I love, I love this. And if we assign this in our Google Classroom to our students, it will already be saved with their name on it, with the assignment name on it, and you'll already have access to it as a teacher in your Google Drive. It'll already be saved in your students' Google Drive. And so it's like that distribution. And like you said, uh, Alana, that, that monitoring, at a glance, I can see where everyone in my class is at, just that visual one shot looking at their, at their slides. And what an important life skill for all of us. <laughs> to stay yeah. on task and manage those to-do lists. That's fantastic. Absolutely. No, and I love I love that it has different versions, just different ways of doing it. And the students can also in their groups comment on these pieces too. So if, right. if there is any little hiccup, that's a nice thing. It's like a really direct line to the teacher to be like, hey, I try to connect with so-and-so. Yeah. They're on it, you know yes. what I mean? If there's any problems, that's what Absolutely. I love too. I, I have a record of it too. That's so great. That's so great. And then you had one more little piece that you wanted to share with us today. I noticed that you have some some things about the Bloom's taxonomy that uh, I think is so important to, to support that whole idea of task progression and, and project progression. Right. So all of our tasks should be um, have high accessibility for everyone. So entry point where everybody can enter. But when we look at students that might be um, higher level thinking, we can add on comp. Um, complexity by looking at higher level thinking questions. So um, this Bloom's Taxonomy Teacher Planning Kit is an excellent resource for if you're um, looking to challenge some of our students and making sure that we're planning for everyone. It's a great way to just look at the scale of questions, look at your access point where everybody should be able to, well, everybody should be able to participate and right. then add on those complex uh, questions as you move to the right of the document. So you're starting at the level of knowledge on the left and adding complexity ability on the right as you move further. What a great reminder about the idea of, of, of low floor, high ceiling, and just looking at the potential of where can all of our kids go. I love how personalized this task management can be, as well as how universal it can be for all of your students. It doesn't just have to be a student identified with special needs to, to, to learn how to use this. I think everyone can benefit. So thank you so much for sharing this template with us, sharing your knowledge with us, and being part of today's episode. And thank you everybody for watching. To get today's resources, just click below this video as well as check out all of the resources from the amazing inclusive team on their SharePoint page as well. Thanks everybody. Thank you.